All right, there we go. All right, so today we're going to be going over opportunities inside of command. So this is going to be your tools for tech enable agent number two. Um, we're going to go over what you can do, what uh, what um, the intent of opportunities is, um, some of the hidden features that are in there. Um, and I'm also going to leave you with a file um, that allows you to update your opportunities um, to put, excuse me, put the, put the checklist in there that's going um, to show you what your transactions are going to look like. Um, so at the end of the class, I, wish, I will share that with y'all. It's not something that automatically is done for you. You do have to manually go in there and do that. Um, but once it's done, it's like that across the board for everything, okay? Um, so I'm going to show you all that. Uh, and then I'm also going to give you kind of an update uh, on some tech stuff that's happening this week. And we'll go from there. Does that sound good? Cool. Um, as with uh, usual, um, if you have any questions, feel free to write them down. Uh, whenever I ask for those, uh, we'll go over those. I'll, I'll try to have a couple of different uh, question uh, sessions. Um, for those of you on Zoom, um, if you just want to put it in the chat box, and I'll get to those uh, during those as well. So the first thing we're going to start with is obviously coming into command. Um, if you don't know what command is by now, um, I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> this is where everything that our business is going to be. So um, to get there and to get the most stable um, version of our website, you're going to go to agent.kw.com. If you haven't bookmarked that uh, link yet, it's definitely advised that you do so. Uh, because I said, this, this is where you're going to do all of your business. Remember, this is your CRM. This is everything that you're going to need, okay? Uh, what we're going to be focusing on today, so previously, we went over the, um, the first couple of applets there. So we went over contacts, we went over the tasks, and we went over smart plans. Now, I, I noticed that most of y'all are probably asking if we're going to go in order here. The next one is referrals. I am working on a specific class for referrals. There seems to be an abundance of referrals now. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do those correctly to make sure that all parties get paid. Okay, so we're not going to go over in this class. So we're going to skip that one. And we're actually going to be in opportunities. So if you don't know what opportunities is, that's the one where there's the two hands shaking hands. So if you want to go ahead and click in there now. And you should get a pipeline view. So I'm going to let this load. <clears throat> and what this is, is a first glance or at a glance of your business. Can anybody tell me what three sections these are broken down into? Listing, buyers, and leases. Perfect, yes, leases, uh, sorry, listings, buyers, and leases. This is where the majority of your business is gonna be, right? So um, for those of you doing leases, uh, tenant and landlord are actually together inside of leases. So don't get confused if there's not um, a separate one for landlords. Um, I'll actually show you that. So I'm gonna go over some of the um, leases um, things so you can get an idea what that looks like. Um, but tenant and landlord are both under, underneath. Um, leases. So we're gonna go over a couple of different things. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of break down every page that pops up so you know exactly what's going on on those pages, okay? So on this one, like I said, this is the, um, the outline of what your business looks like. So you can see listings at the top. And it's broken down into five different categories. We'll go over those categories here in a minute. Um, but you'll see that it is cultivate, appoint, active, under contract, and closed. And that is the same thing for buyers as well as leases. And I'm going to show you what those kind of do or what, what the purpose of those is um, or are. Uh, on the right-hand side over there, <laughs> my text is coming off. Um, on the right-hand side over there, you'll see that you have your GCI and your probable income. Did everybody see that on the right-hand side? So the, for those of you, do, is there anybody in here that doesn't like to keep track of their money? No? So this is gonna keep track of what your business is looking like, okay? What's really cool is up here at the top, like I said, listings, it's gonna show your probable income um, as well as your potential income. So don't look at my listings, they're not as great as my buyers. So if you look at my buyers, my probable income, it's 42,000, okay? And you see right below that, my potential is, is 11. Does anybody know the difference between those two? Anybody heard of fallout? So this is this is what this is factoring in. This is factoring in your fallout, um, depending on 
um, how you update your men, it's going to give you an idea of what you're actually going to make based on how you're moving along inside of your transactions. So that's that's what that's showing. That's the fallout. Okay. Uh, there is a breakdown for all three of them, like I said. And then right below that, they're going to give you a couple different other views. So for those of you like charts and, and stuff like that, this will actually show you a line graph of what your business looks like. So you can see right here, obviously, you always want to go up. You never want to go down. So you see right here, mine is going up. Looks like I'm doing something right. <laughs> uh, on the left over here, it's also a line, or no, a circle graph. Uh, broken down specifically into those same things. Um, it shows you the types as well as how many of those are in each one. And again, the probable and potential. Um, the other thing is on the bottom down here where it says closing this month. Does anybody have anything in here that's closing this month? Anybody? No? So if you actually have a closing coming up based on the, the close date that you have in there, it'll actually show you at the bottom that that is closing. So you can actually have a visual of your transactions that are closing. Um, does anybody have any questions about this page specifically? Yes, ma'am. Now, if you have a part and it's hard, but it's still showing there, is that because? That's because you haven't moved to the close section yet. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, another question is if I have my list of closings, but one of them has been moved. We have an amendment because mm -hmm. we moved the closing to another day. I do have to go back in and change closing day. Correct. Yeah. Myself. Yeah, you have to change it because the system doesn't know that it's, it's moved. I don't think you know that. It's kind of a reminder, so it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this as if I'm creating a brand new opportunity. And then I'm going to go back through some of these and break down some different things. Okay. So just bear with me. Um, I'm going to start off with everyone's favorite question because everyone sees this button and thinks it does something amazing. Unfortunately, it doesn't do anything right now. The import button. If you have the import button, nine times out of 10, you're, we're going to click on it and it's going to say no pipelines found. Don't freak out about 80% of the agents here have the exact same thing. I've only found three other agents that allows you to import. Um, so all that is, is if you're using dot loop, you'd be able to import transactions in there. They're not fixing it. It's just a, it's just a button they haven't removed yet. Okay. So don't freak out if it's not working. It? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be part of it. Yeah, some, some people it works, some people don't. The, the intent was whenever we first rolled out command, you could import your dot loop stuff into there so you can get started. Right. So obviously. They don't want you to do that. Correct. Yeah. So we're going to start with the next button. So this is the create opportunities. Now, if this is your first time in this class, which I have seen everyone in my class, so I'm sure you know to have a contact in your database, correct? So we're going to go ahead and create a test opportunity so I can show you what this looks like, okay? So I'm gonna use me and we're gonna go ahead and put myself in there. Now, um, if you're following along, I would definitely suggest to go ahead and put yours in there as well um, because some of these views you will not get unless you have an opportunity in there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out. Um, as most of you probably are aware, you're only required to put in what has the red asterisk right now. So go ahead and put those things in there and I'm going to go ahead and do the same. Whenever you hit create, you should have a view like this. Most of y'all have been to compliance class. This should be a very good view, but we will go out of this to show you everything outside of opportunities. So once everybody is in the view, you just want to give me a thumbs up so I know everybody's in the same place. It's not as you're here. You need to go ahead and put your contact in there. Your customer's name. Mm -hmm. Everybody else there? So you're just filling in what is required to move on to the next one. 
So it looks like you don't have that contact in your database. You have to have it in your database. You have to go to contacts and then put them into contacts. Everyone else good? So once you're in this view, to get back to what I call the tile view, is you're going to click on listing cultivate right above the name. Does everybody see that right up here? Yep, yeah, it says listing cultivate. Or it should say buyer cultivate, depending on which one you chose. If you click on it, you should see a view like mine. Oh, you're good. Perfect. So it looks like everybody is there. So this is going to be um, your tile view. Is, anybody, is, this, is, is this anybody's first time seeing this? First time seeing this? For those of you that have seen this, what can you tell me what this is? Yep, so this is how you keep track of your stages and where your transactions are at. This is where those five steps are really important, okay? So you see right now that you have cultivate, appointment, active, under contract, and closing it there across the top, okay? But now with inside of cultivate, you now see that I have three other subcategories. You see that? So mine is watch, nurture, and hot. Each one of these, each one of the, the, the main five, which again, can, cannot be edited. Those are built into the system. So those, those are the five that literally describe your transaction in five steps, okay? So those can't change. Now, anything underneath that can, but you can edit to whatever you want. So like I said, these are something that I've put in here. I think yours may be different if you haven't changed any of these. Uh, I'm not sure what. So yeah, it's still warm, nurture, and hot. Mine just has the months I've after. Now you'll see, I'm gonna click through these real quick so you can see the different steps. Now, don't freak out because some of mine have been changed. So I have, so I have an appointment. I have, a, my, I have a set appointment. I have a held appointment and I have kept my appointment. Under active, I have pre-listing, I have MLS. I have daring active listings. Disregard any time that it says legacy, okay? Legacy was a spot that was put in, um, that was linked to put that import button. So that when you did import it, it actually put them in the legacy spots and not in the other spots. So disregard those legacies, okay? Under contract here, I have escrow, inspections, appraisal, financing. And under closed, I have closed. Now, from inside of this view, you have a couple different ways to look at this. So you can do the, what I like, which is this tile view. So for example, I'm gonna go back to cultivate here. And I have this transaction that I just started. If you notice on the left-hand side of that card, it's got those little six little dots. You can actually grab and hold on to this and drag this to the next spots. So you just click and hold and drag it to the next steps. Now let's say I've already worked it through and I needed to have an appointment set, right? So now I can take this tile and hover it over appointment and you'll notice that it turns blue. Do you see that? Appointment turns kind of like a teal color and I let go and now he is now under appointment. And this is how I keep track of where he's at, okay? If you don't like this view, if you're not really a big fan of the tile view, they do have a list view if you want to do it that way. I know some people like to use the list view. Same concept, you're still going to drag them where he needs to go. Uh, right here. Now, like I said, you, you can do it that way. The only thing that I have found personally is that, and one of y'all, I hope one of y'all finds it, but I can never get it to drag and drop to where I want it. So 
I know that you can change it from within inside of details and it will update, um, but I am more of a, a physical person. I like the fact that I can drag it to each step, which is kind of cool. Um, also in here, you'll notice uh, that below um, the name on the right hand side, you'll notice that there is a little checkbox that has a checklist. Now, you may not have that at all in yours. The version that has to be created. And thankfully, one of our lovely app coaches here at QWRI has sent us the sheet that I'm going to be sending to y'all, which does have all of this already done. And what this is, this is steps. So um, would it be beneficial if you could see a roadmap of what each step needs to be done before it goes to the next process. Mm -hmm. So you know you're not missing anything like appraisal, inspections, um, insurance, make sure everything is done correctly. That's what this is. And this is fully customizable for anybody. Mm -hmm. So you can make it specific. So if you have one assistant to file to you, if there's something that you may not do, um, or if you're in a team and they may do that, um, or you have a TC and they do that, I would still advise to keep it on there and let them know when it's done so you can keep track of it yourself. That's my gift to you whenever y'all leave. So I'm going to send that to you. But you can go through here and you're able to check off what's going on. So for example, Josh Revere here is listing his house. I can go ahead and prepare everything that needs to be done. Okay. So you see here under the appointment, I can do prepare the loop, I can confirm the appointment, prepare an update presentation, I'm preparing the comps, I'm getting the uh, listing documents, I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, but this makes sure that you're not missing anything. Okay. And what's really cool is these are dynamic, meaning that depending on where they're at, those steps change. So for example, I get done with the appointment, I'm going to schedule the appointment, right? And so now you'll notice that I went from nine steps to three steps. You see that? So now mine is review and confirm signatures, file, um, file driver license in the loop, and send a thank you note. So I can check these off and as I, as I check them off, I can see that my bar fills up to know that I've done what needs to be done. Cool. The other thing is you can also set due dates. So from in here, um, if you wanted to um, confirm those signatures to make sure that they were done, even though we do most of this, not kind of the greatest example, but you'll get the idea. Um, I can set an appointment, or sorry, set a, a due date for Friday that I need to make sure that it's done before Friday. So I can come in here and click on needs to be done by Friday, these will be done by 9 a.m. And now that becomes a task. That is now something that actively needs to be done before May 14th at 9 a.m. Cool. What's cool is you can also do that for each thing that's on here. So everything on here can have a due date. So you can go in there and customize these transactions so you know what needs to be getting done in a timely manner, okay? There's also the client update right there in the middle. See where it says client update has a little checkbox. What's really cool is if you check that box and for example, um, if it was, uh, let's say for update search criteria, once you start going through um, there's a step on there that says update buyer criteria. I can check that client update box. And then when I do that task and I check it off, the client gets an email and says, hey, your search has been updated. So they can also get the updates as you're checking them off. Now, obviously, you don't want to see everything that's on there. But you can go on there and, and there's there specific things you would like to notify them that's being done. You can check the client update and it will email them. 
Um, again, that is specific for each thing. So if you don't want to do any of them, you can. If you want to do a couple of them, you can do that as well. Okay. If there's anything you want to add that's not on here, you'll notice that you can add your own. So if there's anything, maybe you're in the set appointment and say, well, there's something else that needs to be done for this one. I can add this step here and add that item in. So, and it will be specific for that transaction. That's the really important part. So right here, if I'm in here underneath this Joshua Beard listing and I need to add a step, then I could add a step right here and it will not add it to anything else. It will only add it to here. Okay. Any questions so far? Anybody completely lost? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh yeah, yeah. You want to you want to check that before it's yeah. You don't want to you don't want to do it and then client update. You want client update then, then the, right? Because okay. you're telling the system that you want it to want the client to be updated when this is done. <clears throat> also, to make it a little easier, so for example, I'm right here in the appointment section, right? You'll notice that I have the uh, edit stage right here. Uh, uh, below my name. Does everybody see that on nurse? Mm -hmm. So if you click on edit stages, you can actually come in here and do them here as well. Now this is your kind of master for the, these sections. So these are the ones that are always going to show up um, for all buyers or all listings. Now there's going to be specific ones for listings as there is for buyers. But for example, if you change it from in here, you are now updating all of them. So that's what I was saying earlier, if you wanna add a, an item specific for that transaction, you would just scroll down, click add item, type in what needs to be done, and then that would be part of that checklist. If you update it from there, it will update your listing section. Right, it's gonna only update whatever section you're in. So if I, add, if I add a stage or I delete one of these or edit anything in here, it's only gonna edit within the listing appointments appointment stages. stages. Because that's what you want. Right. Excellent. Right. Every chance, yeah. This is your this is your master. Whatever is in here is what's going to show up for every single listing under the appointment stages. So in order, in order to add, you have to kind of go to listing and every single stage to add your master list yeah. instead of outside of your list. Right. So this each one of these you're going to do individually with inside of those five stages. So okay. for example, if I wanted to edit the um, active one, I click on active and click on edit stages. And now these are all the active stages. And like I said, these are your masters. So what's ever in here is going to be what's going to be on every listing that you make. Okay. <clears throat> Again, you can also edit, delete anything from here. And it's very simple. So for example, that pre-listing, I'm going to add a step there. I can come in here I can change that name if I want to. I wouldn't suggest messing with the probability that actually kind of works uh, itself out as you're moving stuff through transactions. So I wouldn't touch those, um, but definitely if you want to change the names or if you add your names in there, this is how you'll change the name. And if you want to change the checklist, you just come underneath checklist and click on the items. And now you can go through and do that from here. So you can, you, this is where you'll add it and change it. And you can also, if you want by default to have certain things, whether it's certain transactions or not, you just want, for example, um, you want every client to be notified of when staging is complete. You check it right here in the master and hit save. And now anytime that staging is complete, it's checked off. It will get sent to the client since the staging is complete. So this is your master. This is where everything's going to change. Now, if you want to add one like we did earlier, be sure you do the add item from there. Okay. Yes, ma'am. They do not. That you just have to have your email, and they have to be in your database. They don't have to be in your. 
Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and if you click in, if you click that little gear, it takes you into the opportunities um, client update. Thank you for a second. And this is where it'll tell you when it's going to send, who it's going to send to, what it's sending from. So this is this is how you customize it to be um, to both clients or just one client. Um, which I think is really cool because you, if you only want one person to be notified, you can have that, or you can have both clients be notified. So was it a wheel you said this? If you're inside of the edit stages, okay. can you click on the little gear? Oh, that one. Yep. Okay. And it's going to take you into. And that should be per transaction. Uh, no, this right here is going to be per, this is, this is opportunities as a whole. And you'll get something like this. So for example, here's the email template. This is what it will show you. So it's it's going to show you the team logo, your uh, your name, or sorry, your photo, your name. But it's going to say, uh, we're checking things off the list here. Here's some of the tasks that were completed for, has the date, and it's going to show you what things were actually done. So you can actually, like I said, keep them track of everything. So if you really want, if you really want somebody that really wants to keep track of every single thing, so when the appraisal order lends back, anything like that, they're going to email every time that something gets done, and it shows you what what has been done. Now you'll notice it's not instant. I want you to notice that it'll send it at a certain time when it's done. Do you see that? So. Uh, it's 5 30 in the afternoon, is what it's set right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. My yeah, I think that's the, is that what everyone else says? 5 30? I guess I'll change it. Right. Yeah. 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 I guess I'll change it. I guess it's a preference. <laughs> um, I'm glad we're in here too, because as we're in here as well, this is your opportunity settings. Now, to get here, um, from outside of doing what we just did. If you click on your name and then click on settings, you'll notice that on the left-hand side, you should have command settings and then opportunity settings. And you'll notice there's a couple of things in here. So like I said, you have the client update, which was what we just went over. This is the design template. So you can actually um, used to be able to make a template of the email. Um, as most of you probably, I don't know if you can see it here, um, but I can tell you that this is old. Does anybody know why I can tell this is old? <laughs> because it says choose the sketch house template. Oh, sketch house is what it used template. to be called when you made the first rolled out. What is that? Design? Uh, design template. Yeah, it's, um, its intent was for you to be able to design those emails and stuff, mm -hmm. um, but they're making it more streamlined so it does it for you so you don't have to design anything. So this is something that hasn't been um, removed. Yeah. Um, opportunity tags. So for those of you that uh, tag your opportunities, this is where your tags will be. Um, if you've done this before with the dot loop that's that you're allowed to, um, you can see here that one of the tags was actually import from dot loop. So if you don't have that, it's okay. Um, when I first started doing this, I was actually able to do that, um, but that's where your tags are being. You can also create new ones from here as well, as well as edit them and delete them as well. Okay. Um, I know some of the commercial people are using commercial tag uh, as a, as for their buyers saying it's a commercial. Um, uh, if you want to keep track of maybe if it's a referral, I mean, there's just different things if you want to keep it um, organized. It's more of more just for organizational. Um, the last one here is opportunity archives so yours more than likely won't have 104 of them <laughs> but this is all your uh, opportunities so every time that you archive it it does put it into the archive so that if you get it back you come in here and click on restore and you will get a uh, restore of your opportunity yeah. Yeah, this is this is if you uh, if you uh, archive it, you can get it back. So it's not it's not 
It's not lost. It's just temporarily moved. Okay. Stop time for 24 hours or 36 hours. Do all the back end and fix my database, put everything the way I want it, and then reset the clock and start. <laughs> and now I'm back. I know. It's like your day. I've been trying to set this up completely. And it's been what, two months now? And it's just yeah. so busy. Yeah, I don't have time for it. Um. So we're gonna go back into opportunities real quick. And there's just a couple other things that I'm gonna show you in here. Um, I'm not gonna dig, dig too far um, because some of these steps are going to be considered your commission and compliance class. Um, so I don't wanna to dig too far into it, but, oh, it's the wrong thing there. Let me go back. But I'm going to show you what these cards look like once you are going in the uh, because I know there's a little bit of confusion because most people come here, they can see where they're at, and then they lose the tile view. So the tile view is only available in one spot. Okay. So for example, if I'm going to look at an appointment, I'm going to click on the little appointment icon. And that is going to take you straight to that tile view. Okay. So if you're searching for your opportunity um, in this, excuse me, in a search bar, you won't see this. So the only time you can see this is when you when you click on those actual steps, okay? The other thing here is if you, since we're gonna go over the um, archive, or just went over the archive, uh, if you need for some reason to archive this, all you need to do is click on the little dots and you can do the archive opportunity, okay? Whenever you click into it, so be sure to click the name, you're going to see a view that most of you are probably seeing Y'all do come to the compliance and commission class. And this is the first thing that we always see. Um, and we're going to kind of break down the other tabs that we don't really go over in that class. Okay. So the first one here is details. Does anybody know what details is? It's all yeah, this is this is all the information for this person. So you see that's broken down. Um, by the opportunity, who owns it, market center, what stage they're in, their time frame, their appointment, their agreement, all the different important dates and numbers, um, and decimal points and percentages that need to be in here for this transaction. Now, yours may look different if you're on a buyer side as opposed to a listing side, but this is a listing one. That is why you'll see that there is a seller's worksheet on mine. So if, if you didn't know, there's actually a seller's worksheet inside of command for the listing side. So you can actually have a breakdown of what that looks like. Um, there's also property. So th this is something that's really important, um, especially on the buying side. Um, how many of y'all have been doing new builds or have done a new build? No, okay. So there are some cases where when you're putting that address in for a commission, um, that it's not popping up, okay? The alternative way is that you can actually come in here and fill out this property and it'll actually put that up there where it says select from listings. It'll actually use the address from here, which allows you to submit for compliance. Um, I've seen some people that have, especially on rentals, uh, for some reason, rentals aren't popping up. Um, so I had to work with someone the other day um, the rental wasn't popping up an offer. So what we did is we actually just went here, typed in the property name, and then automatically updated select from listings with that address so that he was able to submit for um, for commissions so that he could get paid. Okay. Click on the little pencil. Oh, that's mm -hmm. But that's where you would put the listing. Yep. That's where you put the address at. The other one is very short and sweet. So this one says seller profile, the buyer would say buyer profile. Um, this is only going to tell you if the um, client is using the app. That's all it is. You can see here that Josh Revere is registered with the consumer platform, which is saying that he is signed up with the app, okay? Below that is going to be your guide. How many of y'all knew that there was buyer and seller guides built into command? So this is where your buyer and seller guides are. 
This is also where you're going to tell them where they're at. So for example, I click on manage guide and I can go ahead and tell them what step they are on. And it'll show up what's inside their app, what step they're going, or what step they're going to and what they're going from, okay? The uh, next one, obviously we go over documents and offers in the compliance class. So we'll click on notes. All this is is if notes were put in um, to the contact, they show up here, as well as if you would like to put a note for this transaction, it's basically just a digital notepad. That's really all this is. So if you want to keep notes specifically for it, you can do it right here. And then timeline <clears throat> is just going to show you what this opportunity is doing. So you'll notice that it's going to show you what tasks were done when you went into the pipeline, what was adjusted. So literally everything that you do with inside of that opportunity is kept track here in the timeline. So you can kind of see a um, rolling activity log of what, what's going on. Um, So with that being said, does anybody have any questions? We got about 10 minutes here over the floor for questions, concerns, so complaints. So on that, is it just pulling things that we have in our list of things we need to do with that listing? Is that what's showing up there? No, so all this is is showing you what uh, is actually being done. So for example, it says checklist item review and confirm signature due date change from to and it's shown now that's being changed to an actual date. Did you open up things? Anytime you do anything, it's going to show it in there. Yeah, it keeps track of everything. So if it was moved, if a detail was changed, anything that has to do with it will will be in here. Everything. Yep. You cannot. This is for your, um, yeah. It's basically, as Tomas likes to call it, it covers your assets. Say what? Archive this? Yeah, you can archive it, and it'll show up being archived and unarchived. Because mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Yeah. This all this right here is just to protect you. That's all that is. Any other questions about opportunities? I don't know if I mentioned or made it clear at the beginning, but this is where all of your transactions are going to take place. Okay. So whenever you do create those opportunities and you do uh, come in here and start working these, um, these clients, when you do those start transactions inside documents, that is what opens up your loop or your DocuSign room and connects them. So it's very important as you're doing and tracking your stuff within here. Because this also ties in as well to your goals. So if you set up your goals for 2021, on your front page, you should have your goals. This is where that information is being pulled from. So every time that you set those appointments, so every time you put a contact inside of a set appointment, it's gonna track it as you set an appointment. Or whenever you close it and you drag it to close, it's going to show you what is closed and it's gonna knock your number down and it's gonna show you what percentage you are to your goal. So that's directly tied to your opportunities. Um, this is on your homepage. Any other questions? All right, since there's only six of us, I'll need six ahas before we can leave for today. So who wants to go first? Yeah, the sages, keep a track of everything, okay. You can't repeat the same one. No, and I like the list of items on your list page. I haven't added it, and I have this spreadsheet mm -hmm. that you gave us, but I just haven't added 
for lack of time, and it's been a month since I promised myself I would do it, and here we go again. I went through it again today, and it wasn't there. And I'm like, I forgot. So now I put it on my list of things to do. Now it's on your to-do list. Yes, it's on my to-do immediately. It is awesome. And it just gives you every step to put on every stage. And that way you just check mine. And Diane, uh, for, for since you're on Zoom, I did drop the checklist into your you. chat box, so you can Thank download you. it from there. Mm -hmm. All right, who's next? Who's my next victim? You know that we have. Excuse me, I'm You're fine. I didn't realize that. Oh my goodness, it's getting worse. So I just got a new volume, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that we have to submit. Well, I knew that I had taken this class before, right. but I didn't realize that we have to submit it to the compliance department. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of all new to me. So, anyways. Tying everything together. Yeah. Okay. Oh, task list. Task list? Mm -hmm. Those are something that's really, uh, that I've used that um, to cover myself quite a bit. Uh, because you have those there, you know, now you, there's no excuse. So why do you know what would need to be done? It's right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll, I'll bring it up so you can see what it looks like. Um, right here. You may not be able to read it because it is broken down into um, different um, transactions. So there's. this came from a maps coach. Um, so you know that it already is good. Now, like I said, you may, um, you may want to change it or modify it to um, to what you want to do, but um, sorry. but it's a great way to get started. This is what they're sending um, anybody that's wanting to get started on it. This is what they are sending to their um, their clients. So you don't have to pay for it; it's free. So as you can see here, this is broken down as a buyer. So you can see that, actually, you can't see it, Diane, because I didn't share the screen. You can see here that it's broken down into your steps. So on the left-hand side over here, it's your close rate appointment, active on the contract, although that's closed. Um, and it's broken down into the three steps, the three sub-steps. So now we have watch, nurture, hot, schedule and scheduled kept, Search, showing, negotiations, escrow, inspections, appraisal, finance, very close. Now, within each one of those, now I'm not going to go over all of them, but to give an example, for the watch up there, it says obtain email address, tell our story, obtain phone number, obtain current address. And what I like about this is before each thing that needs to be done or something that you need to do, for example, the one that just read, it says do obtain email address. This one says, email, tell our story. Do, obtain, so it's telling you the, the activity that needs to be done, and then it's telling you what needs to be sent. So just like when you get down here underneath showing, it says discuss what buyers, so it's discuss what buyers should look for and what to look past. So it's telling you kind of what action they need to do, which is kind of cool. Kind of helps you um, understand what those steps are trying to tell you. That, that makes sense. Can you actually print that out? You can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You absolutely can. Uh, and you'll see, like I said, this one's for a buyer here. There is listings. So you still go on listings down here at the bottom. Now these are all the listings. And then we have leases. Now leases right now is being updated. Um, we haven't had the updated one. So the only one you need to focus on is seeing a CTA. So that's it. It's a good question. So um, the other one is tag. Um, this one's actually really cool too as well. Um, I haven't kind of gone over this, but um, this person has used, um, or this coach has used the method of color coding to tell him what's going on. So 
um, oranges or ownership types. So they have them, if they're labeled with orange, they're either an investor, landlord, multifamily, or a tenant. Um, there is certain um, like past clients. So all the greens, dark green is past client, uh, past buyer, past seller. Um, for those of you that do the D2 or DT, D2, there we go. Um, it actually gives you the breakdowns, which I think is cool. So right here in black, you have A, W, B, A, C, K, D, G, uh, or sorry, D, O, and so forth. So you can tag your database with those. Does anybody not know what D2 or DT, D2 is? Nobody. So those that is your um, that's your calls for the week. Those are your reach outs. So every week you have a new one, and you go down the list. So you go A, which is tied to W. So your first week, all your people that have A and W. So either the first name, I see people do first name, I see people do last name. Um, but I do last name. So everybody that has a last name starting with A and W, those are the people I'm calling. To. Next week, everybody that has a B and E, I'm calling all the B and E's. So that's your B, T, B, two. So this is those are the tags. You can use those. Again, like I said, this was shared by a maps coach. So you may not need to use all of them, um, but you, you can have something that starts off um, and you can kind of modify and see how your stuff kind of works. So the idea of giving me two weeks um, that at the end of that 10, 12 week period or whatever, it rolls over and you start, like if you tag the database for, you know, A and W and you tag them mm -hmm. with the A and W, you pick up those for that week. Mm -hmm. That means two week, 12 weeks later or whatever that's many you have in there, you pick that A and W again. Yep, because that is your, that is your reach out. Oh, wow. That if, if you go through, and you follow that whole list, everybody's in your database should be touched. Should be touched. Yep. Whether it's a phone call, email, text, yes. thank you, or handwritten note, that's that is your list. So if you follow that list, you hit everybody in your database. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Does anybody else have any questions before we log off? We got two minutes. Nothing else? Going once, going twice. Well, thank you for coming to the class. Like I said, this one is being recorded. Um, I will actually uh, be uploading this one um, next week. Um, so you will get to watch this one. Um, and um, these all should be downloaded as we're doing them. So um, you'll be able to watch those back and follow along if you need to. So um, last thing, if you come to the class, as usual, if you need anything, um, y'all have my number, um, reach out to me uh, or email and I can definitely answer anything that y'all have. So y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's day. And again, thank you. <laughs>